What's up guys, in today's video we are doing a full transformation on this beautiful 46 foot black pearl catamaran sport fishing yacht. Let's go. Here came out absolutely incredible and I can't wait for you guys to see the before and after video at the very end of this video so make sure you stick around to the very end to see the full transformation this particular boat is located in Gulf Breeze Florida this customer said this is only a one-of-a-kind boat he bought this thing it was in pretty rough shape and he brought it down to South Florida to completely renovate it the interior is all completely custom the top is custom. A lot of this boat is custom. You can't really find too many of these catamaran sport fishing yachts. So it is a true honor to be able to do this boat. Thank you, Randy, for giving us the opportunity to detail this boat and to completely transform it. He actually had another boat detailer do a full detail on this about six months ago, but they did not finish it down properly. So he called us to come out to give this thing a deep clean and a full detail. As you can see here, the boat is actually in pretty good shape, but it's dirty. It has no wax on it. It's got black streak marks the fish boxes are pretty dirty it's got the mild oxidation and it has some crazy swirl marks in it from the past detailer so they probably just hit it with a heavy cut and a medium cut but they didn't actually finish it down properly to remove all of the holograms and obviously seal it up properly so the boat is completed at this point we're gonna walk you guys through the full process it has zero swirls zero oxidation and this thing is protected and it looks absolutely incredible we are going to start at the very top I did not film that unfortunately because we didn't get the cameras rolling until we got into the flybridge but we did start at the very top we washed the radars and we worked our way down we did wash the top now we're working our way down to the flybridge let's go ahead and start with the initial wash let's go Alrighty guys, we're gonna start off here in the flybridge with doing our first initial wash. The first initial wash is very crucial to the detailing process because this is where we're gonna be getting off any salt, dirt, grime, sand, bird droppings, anything from the surface. And we're gonna achieve that with hand mitts, scrub brushes, and boat brushes with our pressure washer and our foam cannon. Inside of our foam cannon, we do have Dawn dish soap. A lot of you guys ask me if Dawn is safe on boats and the answer is yes, it is perfectly safe on on boats but it is not safe for waxes so if you use dawn on your boat to wash your boat it will strip off your waxes in this first initial process we are actually trying to remove any past waxes and especially any dirt any black streak marks any grime anything that may be stuck to the surface the dawn dish soap is going to cut away the dirt and the grime from the surface it's going to do it safely without etching or damaging the gel coat and it's better for the environment as you can see here we are working over the water so the Dawn dish soap is going to be safe for the water. Once we're done with the initial wash of the exterior of the boat, we're gonna hop to our compartments. We're basically gonna use a 50-50 mixture of super clean and water to scrub out the fish boxes. And we do use a magic eraser to kind of clean them up. Once we're done the fish boxes, we rinse everything out and now we dry the entire boat with our ultra plush drying microfiber towels. These drying microfiber towels really make drying the boat super easy and super efficient. Alrighty guys, it is officially day two. We did all of the washing and cleaning yesterday. We got a little bit behind, one, because the boat was just a little dirtier than we expected. So the washing process took a little bit longer and it started pouring down raining on us for about two hours. So we had to wait for that beautiful Florida rain to disappear. On this particular boat, we are going to do a two-step. We're gonna hit it with a rotary, and then we're going to follow up with the DA to remove all of the holograms and swirl marks that are in this boat. And then up here on the front brow, we have a good amount of oxidation still left. I don't believe they actually got on ropes and harnesses and did the heavy cut. So on the front, we're gonna do a three-step. On the sides, we're gonna do a two. And then everywhere else on the inside of the flybridge, and in the cockpit back here, we are going to give it a nice polish and get it protected with Jeskar Power Lock. We're gonna start off by removing the Isinglass panels. Anytime you have to remove Isinglass panels, just be very delicate when removing them. They can scratch and break pretty easily. Removing Isinglass can be a delicate process. 
We're gonna start Caleb off on the very top. We're gonna go ahead and polish out the sonars and the radars and all of the non-skid up top. We're using the MacShine M8S V2 dual action polisher with the orange CCS foam pad. We're gonna pair that with the Shine Supply Wake Up. Shine Supply Wake Up is a phenomenal cleaner wax that has a little bit of abrasives in there to remove any light oxidation, which there were some on the sonars and the radars, but it's also packed with the SiO2. It's gonna leave a solid protection down. Those sonars and the radar came out absolutely incredible. By the customer's request, we did lay down a nice thick coat of colonite on the entire top. While Caleb's up top handling business up there, I'm going to start our first cutting step on the port side of the boat. We are going to use Shine Supply Chop Top Diminishing Abrasive Compound paired with the Buff and Shine Yellow Wool Pad and Rotary Polisher. The Shine Supply Chop Top is a phenomenal diminishing abrasive compound that's gonna start off as a heavy cut compound. And as you work it through your buffing cycle under the heat of the rotary, it's going to break down into a finer and finer polish, which is really going to give us a really beautiful beautiful gloss on the boat with very minimum holograms. The reason why I love the Shine Supply Chop Top is because it cuts out heavy to deep swirl marks and scratches that were in the boat from the previous boat detailer and it will remove light to medium oxidation and give you a dang near perfect finish to make your polishing process super simple. Now guys, anytime you're running the rotary and the wool pad, especially on the medium cut compound, we wanna use a decent amount of compound, but not a lot. You wanna keep your pad as flat as possible with a very slight angle. And we want to make sure that we always hit the surface at least three passes. So typically on your bigger sections, you're gonna do side to side, up, down, side to side. When you're around the hand railing and whatnot, or any section where you can't do side to side, up and down, side to side, just do three passes of side to side. Three Three solid passes with the Shine Supply Chop Top will leave that surface looking really good and super glossy. When it comes to doing the lower half here, we're going to actually apply the Shine Supply Chop Top directly to the surface, dab it in, and do our buffing steps. Again, the entire time we want to follow that pattern side to side, up, down, side to side when the panel allows for it. Anytime you're running and you're doing the top side of the boat, you're going to have to be bent over like I am here. One way that you can keep that solid, consistent cut is by taking your forearm and putting it into your knee and wrapping the cord around your back foot. When you wrap your cord around your back foot, you are going to prevent the cord from being sucked into the polisher and wrapping it up and breaking your cord. And when you put your arm inside of your thigh or inside of your knee, you're then able to use your leg to be able to put pressure against the buffer and against the boat. That is going to allow you to be bent over in this super awkward position for a long amount of time and stay consistent with that polisher. Stick your elbow inside of your knee and inside of your thigh and use that pressure to push your polisher into your boat. Once we are done buffing the exterior of the superstructure, we're then gonna move our way down to the tow rail. Again, you wanna wrap that cord behind your feet so that you don't suck it up into the polisher and break the cord. When we're doing the tow rail, we're just going to apply the Shine Supply Chop Top directly to the tow rail, and then we're gonna take our pad and maneuver it in every way that we possibly can so that we can buff out the surface. Our next polishing step in the process is going to be polishing the surface again with Shine Supply Chop Top with the Orange Lake Country CCS foam pad using the MacShine M8S V2 dual action polisher. On this polisher, we have it at about 4.5 speed setting and we are going to be removing the light holograms that the rotary and the yellow pad put in the surface. In order to do that, we're gonna continue our polishing pattern of side to side, up and down, side to side. What I want you guys to notice here is how slow and consistent my arm speed is and I'm applying about medium pressure to the surface. As I was polishing the superstructure on the port side, it started to rain, so me and Caleb hopped into the flybridge and decided to tackle it both. To do this, we're using the dual action polisher with the orange CCS foam pad, but this time we're actually using Shine Supply Wake Up. It was perfect for inside the flybridge because it has enough abrasive to remove some of the light holograms that were in the surface, but it leaves a phenomenal shine and a good enough protection inside the flybridge. Shine Supply Wake Up is a great product if you're wanting to just maintain the shine. Inside of the flybridge here, it wasn't oxidized at all. It was a perfect finish, and it even appeared to still have wax on it as we were washing it. So all we did was we maintained the surface with Shine Supply Wake Up. 
After the rain stopped, I then hopped right back to the exterior on the port side as Caleb continued to do underneath the T-top. So with the shine supply wake up, we polished all of the underside of the top as I worked my way down the port side. I've really been loving the MagShine M8S V2. This little dual action polisher is absolutely incredible for wet sanding, for dry sanding, for waxing, and for light polishing like we're doing here. This polisher is really easy. It fits in one hand very well. It's super light and it's just a solid machine. I have had a few little issues over the last two and a half years as I've been using it as far as like the trigger sometimes getting stuck. But guys, at the end of the day, if the trigger getting stuck is the worst problem that I'm having, I feel like it was well worth the money for the MagShine M8S. As I'm running down and finishing the port side of the superstructure, we had Caleb still up in the flybridge, getting everything polished out with Shine Supply Wake Up. And then we had him use the MacShine Mini cordless polisher to get all around the edge of the top and it had a severe water spots and the mini polisher got him right out. It's officially day three on this boat. Uh, yesterday, we got the entire side corrected. Today, we are going to work on getting the brow completely corrected today. The sun is gonna be out a little bit above us in about an hour or so, but we're gonna get on the ropes and harnesses and we are going to start correcting the brow. Once we're correct the brow, if we have time today, we're actually gonna get this side of the boat protected and the brow completely protected because we're gonna take off for the weekend. I never recommend that you guys leave the boat unprotected, especially after you do all of your correction steps. So if you're doing your correction steps and you get the whole boat corrected, you don't wanna leave it for three or four days unprotected with wax because if a bird flies over or just salt and craps on the boat, it could potentially etch the gel coat because there's no protection. So it's just gonna cause more work for you. So anytime that you do a full complete section, go ahead, get it protected. We can do this boat this size in sections. You don't need to do it all at once. If you can do it all at once, great. But if you're a smaller crew, like we have just two of us, you are going to have to break a boat this size into sections. Like I said, we're gonna get the brow done today and hopefully get the brow and this entire side of the boat protected. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so to be able to safely and efficiently do the front brow, we are going to use some climbing gear. Right here, I have two ropes that we're using to be able to go down the brow. We have what's called the Gree Gree. That is a locking mechanism that actually connects the rope to my harness. It's really cool because it has a little lever on there that you just pull and when you need more rope and then when you want it to lock in place, you just simply let go of the lever and, you, and it uses your body weight to lock you in place. This climbing gear is just as much as safety gear as it is is a tool to actually get the job done. I've seen a lot of guys over the years that just get on the front brow and they're just kind of stuck up there, use suction cups. Well guys, anytime you're using these rotary buffers, sometimes you experience kickback or just little things, you just never know. And if you slip and fall off the front of a boat and hit your head and fall in the water, it could be a bad day. So think of this climbing gear as a safety mechanism and it's also a tool for you to be able to do the front brow very, very efficiently. Here on the front brow, we did have to do three steps. We used Shine Supply Heavy Cut on the white wool. Now we're following up with Shine Supply Chop Top on the yellow wool. And then we're gonna follow up with the Shine Supply Chop Top again with the orange foam pad. The same thing that we did on the other side. The reason why we had to do that first step of the heavy cut was because this front brow was really oxidized. You could tell it never had really been buffed since the owner has had it. So we had to remove some heavy oxidation off the front. Then we followed up with the MacShine M8S V2. While you're doing the brow, it's really easy to hold onto the rope and then polish out the surface with just simply one hand. The MacShine M8S V2, in my opinion, is a must for doing the front brow of a boat. We've officially finished all of the compounding and polishing on the brow. It is about two o'clock right now. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna wash the entire boat, scrub out the sides so we can remove any oils, any compound dust from the actual boat. And then we're gonna go ahead and seal it up before we leave out for the day. And then when we come back, we're gonna do the entire other side and the cockpit. Let's go. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this boat a wash. There is compound dust everywhere because the compounds can be dusty once you start buffing. So we're going to remove the compound dust and just any lubricants and oils that may be in the surface from the buffing. So we're gonna use Dawn dish soap to strip off the compound dust and the oils from the compound. 
Once we have the surface completely washed down with the Dawn and dried, we are then going to start the waxing process. To do the waxing process, again, you are going to need the MacShine M8 SV2. This time we're using a white CCS foam polishing pad and we're using a product called Jeskar Powerlock. Jeskar Powerlock is a phenomenal sealant that's going to be applied to the surface. You're gonna let it sit for roughly 15 minutes to cure in the sunlight, and then you're gonna come back with yellow microfiber towels and wipe off the excess. I have used plenty of other sealants and waxes from other brands and all of them are good. I find myself constantly coming back to the good old classic Jeskar Powerlock. It's a great formula and it's going to give you a solid protection for at least four to six months if maintained properly. When it comes to applying Jeskar Powerlock, just put a little bit on your white foam pad and you're going to massage it in. I usually run it at speed setting about three to three and a half and we're just going to do a nice even side to side pattern. You don't really need to do the side to side up down side to side anymore. Just a good side to side because we're not really polishing in the wax. We're just applying it to the surface. After you've done applying it, take your fresh microfiber towels and go ahead and wipe off the excess. just going to repeat those exact same steps here on the brow. Side to side application, we're gonna let the Jeskar Power Lock cure for about 15 minutes and then come back with our microfiber towels and wipe off the excess on the front brow. What's up guys, it's officially day four on this beautiful 46 foot black pearl. The brow in this side of the boat is completed. Now we technically would start on the other side because we have a lot of compounding to do, but because I have to be out of here by about three o'clock today, because it is my son's eighth birthday today, we have his birthday party to get to. I am going to do the cockpit area in the back today. I think that's an area that we can just get completely knocked out. And then tomorrow and Wednesday, we're gonna get the other side corrected and waxed. This particular customer did request that inside of his compartments that we wax them. So that'll be new. I don't normally do that for most people, but we're gonna get the compartments waxed. We're gonna get the lids waxed and all of the tracks inside of the compartments wax. This particular customer wants his boat completely corrected and protected. Let's go. So the very first step that we took when we were polishing out the cockpit area of this sport fisher was that we noticed that the glass had some severe water spots and water etching. We did a little small test spot with the WSP in the corner and it didn't fully remove it so I knew that we would have to do a full glass restoration. To achieve the glass restoration we first wiped down all of the exterior glass panels with underdog WSP water spot remover. As you can see here we're spraying it directly onto the glass and we're taking a micro fiber towel and wiping in the surface. This was a pretty cool day, so it wasn't very hot. If it is a hot day, you'll definitely want to do smaller sections and try to not let the WSP actually dry onto the surface and limit your overspray from getting onto metal. You can see the staircase here with the stainless steel. We really wanted to make sure we didn't get any overspray from the acid onto the metal because it can discolor it. We used a chemical abrasion first to remove the minerals from the surface so that we can then hop to a physical abrasion to remove the etching in the glass. To achieve this, we're using again the MacShine m 8 v 2 with the same orange CCS foam pad with Shine Supply Wake Up. The Shine Supply Wake Up again is a phenomenal cleaner wax. It has a slight abrasion to it that in this case are removing the water spot etching in the glass, but it's not going to scratch the glass or leave holograms in the glass. We're we're going to follow that same pattern that we always do. We're going to do side to side, up and down, side to side on the speed setting four. The Shine Supply Wake Up, we add it directly to the pad. We dab it into the surface and do all of our polishing steps. The Shine Supply Wake Up is great at removing the etching, but it also has protection in there. So as you're polishing it, when you finish that last side to side, go ahead, leave it on the surface for about 15 minutes so that it can cure to the windows. And it's going to leave a nice thick layer of silica, which is SiO2 behind for UV protection. And it's going to make the windows water bead like crazy. When you're done your polishing, it should look about like this. Nice, even coat of Shine Supply wake up on the surface. After 15 minutes, take your two fresh microfiber towels and wipe off the excess and leave your windows completely streak free. After you do this, your windows are shined up and protected.
All right guys, so after we got the windows polished up, we went ahead and did this under section and the entire back wall. We repeated the same steps that we did on the glass. We used Shine Supply Wake Up with the orange foam pad on the Max Shine M8 SV2. It had a lot of drip and water spots on the underside of this edge. So we really took our time to really polish out those water spots. And then after that, we went ahead and applied Jeskar Power Lock again using the white CCS foam pad to apply the Jeskar Power Lock. Once we applied the Jeskar Power Lock, we did it to the underside of that edge. We did it to the glass to give a nice sealant on the glass. And then we took our two microfiber towels and wiped off. We went ahead and did the underside of this edge, the glass and this back wall section just to completely have it done so that we can move on to the rest of the cockpit. Moving on with the rest of the cockpit, we broke out the lacquer thinner. We used microfiber towels and terry cloths, but be careful with the yellow microfiber towels. It can start to bleed, which it did, and that's why we switched to the white terry cloth. The white terry cloth worked just fine. We had to use the lacquer thinner to remove overspray paint from the customization. There was a good amount of caulking still left over from all the customization as well. And we use it to remove little black scuff marks that were from either shoes or just little bangs against the gel coat while fishing. After we finished up with the lacquer thinner, we went ahead and jumped back to the Shine Supply Wake Up with the MacShine M8S V2. We went ahead and did all of the tops of the lids of the compartments and the undersides of the compartments. The customer really asked if we could polish everything out and protect every square inch of the smooth gel coat, so that's exactly what we did. Again, we love the MacShine M8S V2, especially in the cockpit area because you were easily able to use it with one hand, and it's a super small machine, which is nice, so you're able to maneuver it around these lids undersides, top sides, and all around the cockpit. One of the biggest keys to using the MacShine M8 SV2 is it is a dual action polisher. So it does have that clutch in there and it will stop spinning if you go over edges or if you hit the pad against a edge or a curve. So you always wanna make sure you have a decent amount of pressure on the polisher so that it's giving those correction results. But you wanna make sure that the pad continues to spin. So anytime you go over an edge or a corner and the pad stalls out, that means it's not actually correcting. So you always wanna make sure that pad is spinning. Go ahead, pick you up the MacShine M8S V2 today. Use our discount code Drake15 at checkout at MacShineUSA.com if you wanna save 15% on this awesome machine. After polishing with the M8S V2, we're now gonna switch to the MacShine Mini Cordless Polisher. This little polisher is a game changer. It's cordless and it can be a rotary and a dual action polisher. So right here, we're running the HDO Blue Lake Country one inch foam pad with Shine Supply Wake Up and we have it on the 12 millimeter throw DA attachment. This little machine is great because it allows you to get into the hard to reach places like we're doing right here on the cockpit. And it's great because you can go from one inch and two inch backing plates again we're using the da setting here to get all around the console all around inside of the hatches we're getting all of the edges and it's allowing us to get a really precise cut with this little one inch foam pad when you buy the mini polisher it does come in a full kit so you'll get some pads with it you also get the one inch and the two inch backing plate for the pads you get a rotary setting you get a three millimeter da setting and a 12 millimeter da setting now me personally i only use the 12 millimeter DA and the rotary. The three millimeter, I honestly don't even use it because I don't find that it works very well, but I like the long throw option that this little polisher gives. It has extreme amount of power. It has more than enough to get the job done. And really the batteries last about 30 continuous minutes. Typically I'm using it in smaller sections. So it'll usually last me a good hour or two before I have to switch the batteries. When you buy this machine, it does come with two batteries. Go ahead, pick it up. It's an absolute game changer. Once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead, wipe off all of the Shine Supply Wake Up from the surface. We're gonna work our way all the way around, get all of the Wake Up off of the surface, and then we're gonna rinse out the floors and call it a day for today.
Alrighty guys, so today's goal is going to be finishing this entire side of the boat. Today I'm here a little bit earlier before all the guys show up. We have fresh work shirts coming today. We also have Cameron and Jackson from Ace Mobile Detailing out of Orange Beach, Alabama coming to give us a hand today. I went ahead and contracted these guys out to come help us do the rest of the boat to get it done because I need to get this boat finished up. We have a lot of work today to do. We, Like I said, we have to do all the top up here. We have to do this whole side gunnel. We got to do the tow rail and then we basically have to seal the entire boat so the non-skid the top the glass the front mask coming all the way down the non-skid and we have to do all back here we also have a little bit left to compounding to do up here on the top and the very transom or stern of the boat to get this boat looking incredible we got a long day of work ahead of us let's get to it All right guys, so we're just gonna go ahead and repeat all of the same buffing and polishing steps that we did on the other side of the boat and which we've already talked about in the video. We have the rotary machines running with the buff and shine yellow wool pads with the shine supply chop top. Then we're gonna follow up behind with the Max Shine M8S V2 and the orange foam pads using the chop top to remove the holograms that the buff and shine yellow wool puts in the surface. Cameron and Jackson with Ace Mobile Detailing out of Orange Beach, Alabama came through. They they really helped me out banging out the rest of this job. I only had these guys for one day and they really, really helped me a lot with getting this boat buffed and polished. Thank you guys for coming out and joining me. I really did appreciate you guys. Cameron, the owner of Ace Mobile Detailing, actually contacted me when I was moving back and uh, he said he actually watched all my YouTube videos and he just wanted to learn and he offered to come and work with us and these guys absolutely killed it and they did me a phenomenal favor by coming and helping me knock out the rest of this absolutely beautiful 46 foot black pearl. Yeah, it's, it's my logo. Oh, really? It's my YouTube logo. <gasps> you didn't see it? <laughs> oh, I was about to say. I'm like, I'm like that looks just like me. I was like, I was like, when he comes over, tell him that looks just like me. I normally use Dawn right now, but I'm gonna use some shift because I already have the other side wax. So this is typical when I would use Dawn. Nice. All right. Woo. Alrighty guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and wash the surface again. Again, we're using the Shine Supply Shift Soap instead of the Dawn. I normally would use Dawn in this process. The reason why I'm not using Dawn is because the other side of the boat, the port side of the boat, is already sealed with Jessicar Power Lock, and I didn't want to compromise or strip that sealant off, so that's why we used Shine Supply Shift Soap. The Shine Supply Shift Soap went ahead and removed all of the dust, all of the compound lubricants from the surface, just like the Dawn did. It did an absolutely phenomenal job. After we washed the entire boat, we went ahead and scrubbed out the foam flooring right here all we did was put a little bit of super clean on the foam flooring took our drill brush drilled out the foam flooring and then took our pressure washer and blasted out the surface this left the foam flooring absolutely perfect through that process cameron and jackson were drying the boat we didn't really get too much footage of that i apologize but they dried the boat and then once the boat was dried we went ahead and we all three jumped on machines and applied jescar power lock we applied jescar power lock to the front brow to the entire bow of the boat all of the non-skid every square square inch of non-skid and smooth gel coat and the glass all got a nice thick layer of Jeskar power lock. After we let it sit for about 15 minutes, we then came back with fresh microfiber towels and wiped off the excess and it leaves an absolutely incredible shine.
what's up guys it is officially our last day on this 46 foot black pearl we basically finished the boat yesterday we did all of the rest of the compounding we did all of the waxing we did the non-skid we did the isinglass we did the compartments the only thing left really today is to go ahead and nitpick and perfect the boat now we did not get to the metal so i do officially have to do that but I like to do the metal kind of a very last because anytime you're going up and down and have to inspect it, you're going to get little fingerprints all over the metal. Anytime you come back the next day with fresh eyes, that's always best because you're always going to see stuff at the end of a long, hard working day. You're tired. You're ready to get out of there. It's always best to come back the next day with fresh eyes to be able to go over and inspect the boat fully. We're going to get the fish boxes waxed and then we're going to go ahead and nitpick and get this boat completely wrapped up so that our customer can see it. He's actually going to be coming into town today so he should be able to see it first thing tomorrow morning and I think he's going to be stoked with how this boat came out. Let's go. First thing we did was put all the seat cushions back where they belong. There was a few little things we had to sit back in the compartments. And then we went ahead and wiped all the seat cushions with 303 protectant. This is a good protectant that's going to lightly clean the surface and it's going to leave a UV protection on the vinyl seats. The customer requested the 303, so that's why we used it and it came out great. After we got the seats down, we're going to finish up in the flybridge area here. We're going to go over with Renegade Metal Polish on all of the stainless steel. This is going to get any water spots off little rust marks off of the surface and it's going to leave a nice protection behind we're going to clean off all the screens all the dash all the console area with shine supply aftermath shine supply aftermath is great at getting light dirt off water spots and it's going to leave sio2 protection go ahead always maintain the flybridge of your boat with the aftermath when it comes to the renegade red polish it actually is a phenomenal polish it left a really, really nice shine on all of the stainless steel. It got all the water spots off. It got everything off as I needed it to. The only thing I did not like about this Renegade polish is the dye, the red. I did get in trouble a few times when I touched the gel coat. It kind of stained the white gel coat red. And then I had to go back behind with a little light polish by hand and get it out. Now, granted, it did come right out, but honestly, I don't know if I would recommend using the Renegade red polish from here on out on boats. I did try it from Renegade and I really enjoyed the polish i just did not like the red dye this polish really did clean up the metal really good and the water beads that come from this polish were absolutely incredible when we rinse down the boat later Well guys, we've officially made it to the final steps of this detail. The last thing we did was clean out the fish boxes and we applied Jeskar Power Lock to both fish boxes on the floor. The reason why we did this is because the last day that we were working on it, these fish boxes were still wet. So we let them dry overnight. We came today and I wiped them out. I cleaned them out with Shine Supply Aftermath and then we went ahead and applied a really thick layer of Jeskar Power Lock to the undersides of the lids and the fish boxes. After we let it sit for about 15 minutes, we took a fresh microfiber towel and wiped off the excess. And that is officially it for this detail. Let's go ahead and check out the before and after video. Let's go.